you would have seen my three minute bench here. Now, one of the biggest failures of that bench here is the fact that I just didn't have enough cooling. So I set about trying to sort that out. So what we have here is we have a WM9290. So this is also what we call a CPAP fan. It's designed to prevent sleep apnea. This is the kit as it comes. There's one more cable that sits on here which comes out and is your positive and negative for 24 volts. But in its entirety, this is a little unit. It's quite weighty. What's special about this is it's a multi-stage centrifugal compressor. Here comes in the top, goes into the first set of blades, comes out the side, because it's centrifugal, so it's pushed out to the side, goes around a separating plate, into the centre of a second set of blades, and then out to the edge, and out the hole. Now I tried to pull this apart so I could show it, but the problem is, this top piece is glued on, is where the separator plate is. So it's glued together. So I can undo these, but only pull it up so high because it hits the top compressor. And I'm not willing to pull the nut off because the assembly is probably balanced. The top speed of this blower is 28,000 RPM. It pumps out about 680 litres per minute. And has a 13 kPa pressure rating. It's also rated to only draw 3.2 amps. However, from my findings, that's closer to 10. The unit itself comes with this little pot to control speed. So, and it feels like a nice high quality pot. But if you wish, you can replace the centre wire here with a 5 volt PWM signal and that will power up the machine just fine. There's four bolts on the back that are M4 and it does get warm under operation. I recommend either using a heat sink on the back of it or bolting it directly to your metallic enclosure for cooling. I like the fact that it has this little groove here which enables you to put some sort of an inlet filter on it and something to lock that on with. I'm going to go with a paper filter, um, I'll draw something up for that soon, which will give me quite a reduction in intake noise. The most noise that's going to come from this unit is going to be from the intake. As you can see from the start of the video, my original aneometer lost a vein. So it's dead. So I've replaced it. And at the same time, I got a little decibel meter. So we're using a UT363 anemeter, and we're also using a UT353 decibel meter. This particular meter focuses on velocity. I believe velocity is quite important for 3D print cooling, so that is the unit stand that I'll be going with for measurement. This is my little custom duct that I made to fit onto my carriage. Um, just quickly designed it. It doesn't flow the best, but, but it's certainly good enough for trialling this. Uh, end of the pipe, I've just locked the end of it off. It's got a hard plastic anti-compression ribbing, so that should keep it from flexing. And it just screws in there all nice and snug. It's quite flexible. You can bend at quite sharp angles without it kinking, so that rib is doing a great job. And the end of it simply presses on here like this, and that's it, job done. There will be a link for both this and this pipe in the description. I don't make any money off this. This isn't a paid advertisement. I'm interested in getting something that is beyond stupid for cooling your prints, then this is what you want.
So that's basically it for this video. I'd just like to give a big shout out to my 002H uh, resin printer, which has now done about 9 litres of resin without any faults whatsoever. It sits in here with my printer and a little cabinet and does its own thing. It's just finished the prints for the prototype of the carriage. Um, and yeah, hope to see you in the next video. If you've got any comments down the bottom, I'll do my best to answer them. Let me know what you think. Cheers.